All right, so I want to look up here first at your numbers uh, 10, 11, and 12. We kind of started number 11, I thought. Didn't we? No. Did we start number 11 in class? No, and it said it's kind of like uh, 9 in class. Oh, we did 9 in class. All right. So 11 and 12 are the uh, 10 and 11 are the same type of problem, so I'll do one of them, and then the other one is very simple. So which one do we want to look at, 10 or 11? 11. 11. 11 has volume of a cylinder equals, we've seen this formula earlier this year, pi radius squared height. What is happening between pi radius squared and height, Natalie? They're being multiplied. And I want to find just what the h is equal to. So I only want to know what the height is. If I want to get the height by itself, Greta, what should I be doing on both sides? So I have pi radius squared times height, and we're going to take and divide both sides by pi and radius squared. And over here, by pi and radius squared. On this side, these two are going to cancel. Pi radius squared over pi radius squared is the same as 1. And I'm going to put my h first, because that's what I was solving for, h equals. And I have v divided by pi radius squared. That's it. So, number 10 is almost the same, because this is length with height. And you want to get h by itself. I agree 12 is a little harder. But my hint on 12, and as you do the homework today, like this one, is start off, and as you are looking at 12, we want to get rid of that one half out in front. What is, what can I multiply by to get rid of one half? I could multiply Daisy by what? What could I multiply by to get rid of a half out in front of this right here? Well, a half times a half would give me a four. Wait, no, you divide by the reciprocal. No. I could divide by half, but that would be the same as multiplying daily by the what of a half. Dividing by a half is the same as multiplying by, am I, you know, by two over one, the reciprocal. So in order to get rid of this half, we are going to multiply. So down here in number 12, we're going to put 2 times capital A is equal to. We're going to take 2 times the other side, which is 1 half times H, and then B sub 1 plus B sub 2. Meaning, these are the lengths of these two bases. When I multiply this 2 times a half, that leaves me with 1. So I now have 2 times capital A equals h times b1 plus b sub 2. I'm trying to solve for b sub 2. What could I do next? No, any ideas? Divide by h. Because it's times h here, so I could divide both <coughs> sides by h. And I kind of have it by itself. At this point, I have 2 times a capital A divided by h. Again, if you didn't have it, Make sure you're writing this down. Is now equal to b sub 1 plus b sub 2. So let's say, well, what happened to the parentheses? Well, when you divide it by h, you no longer have to have the parentheses because that's what you were multiplying. You would have distributed. Next step, Adam, what do I need to do to find b sub 2? Minus b1, b sub 1. Both sides are my equal sign. That means I have 2 times capital A over H minus B sub 1 is equal to B sub 2. It is an ugly formula with lots of letters, but part of this literal equation is looking at these kind of activities. So today we're going to do a little more with this. So if you turn in your notes, today we're going to do D15. We'll start on D16 tomorrow with a review, and then we'll be doing this review activity on Wednesday and Thursday. And we will be taking your tests on Friday. Um, as we are preparing for that test, and I understand that science has a test this week, history has a 
cancer tests this week. And they're probably on Thursday. Um, and so making sure you're keeping up um, in here, even some of the stuff you can kind of go ahead and take a look at. So is everyone on their notes? D15. Tomorrow in class, we'll go through exactly what's on the steps. Okay. First problem. Pretty easy. Please do that one right now. We got to get the M by itself. One step, right? Anyone want to volunteer and put it up on the board for me? This this way. Number two is a two step. Okay. So if I'm looking at number two, it's a two-step problem. Two steps in that one. First one is kind of nice. Uh, should have two things, can't add those, not those. Yes, you can do that. It's okay. Just write it down below. Just go M equals down below. Okay. Now, is it would it have been okay to have seven minus three n? Yeah, go ahead. No. You could have had seven minus three n. You could have left it like that. You do not always have to put the variable first. It's a good idea, but it's not wrong. Last one is again two steps. In the last one, you are doing some subtraction first and then division. So, did you see a mistake, Greta? So when you take a look at number two, we're adding the 9m. And again, if you would have had 8 plus 3m, that would be correct also. Um, and then dividing everything by three. The mistake that someone else that I was looking at theirs before I had them come up was they put down 33M. So remember, you can only add like terms as you are looking at that. If you do have fractions and you can simplify, you want to simplify. So when you are looking at the 24 over three and the nine over three, the nine N, you want to simplify. I will tell you today we're going to have a short homework quiz. It's a solve for y and a solve for x. It's the same equation, but just one you solve for y and one you solve for x. So it would kind of be like if I gave you this equation up here, and we said in this one you're going to solve for m, and then the next time you'd solve for x. So you're going to be asked to do both as we look at those, okay? So as we look at this one, first step was subtracting 8 from both sides, then dividing everything by 4. The one thing I will tell you for on the quiz today that people really get mixed up with is if there's a negative in front of the variable and they forget to divide, or when they divide a negative by negative, they forget to tell me it's positive. Okay? Yeah. How do you get one half? If eight divided by four should be negative two. As you look at these two, when they start putting fractions, all of a sudden I have people just like freak out thinking they can't do it. So one of the things I want you to think about is where's the variable that you're trying to solve for? And in this case, we're trying to solve for C, and it's in the numerator. And over here, you're trying to solve for the D. So these are what you really want to get by themselves. Now, some people like to get rid of the fraction part right away. So if we're getting rid of the fraction part, Christelle, and I don't want to have this divide by D. What could I do to every single term so that I don't have to have division by D? Yeah, and we're just going to put D over 1, right? Times C over D. Plus 
2 times the D equals F over G times that D. So that when you're showing that, you're multiplying by that same thing by every single term. Okay? Once I do that, Callie, what can I start simplifying? What do I know about D over D? That's the same as just 1. So we're left with C plus what? 2D equals Kennedy. How about that last one if I put it as C over 1? I'm going to multiply those two. Yeah, it's just ugly. You just have lots of stuff in it. All right, so Robin, I'm trying to get C by itself. What would you do? My answer is C equals FD. I have no idea what FD and G stand for minus 2D. I don't know why they have all these letters except they just really want you to do a hard job. They want you to look at formulas that have multi, multi steps. So we're taking a look at that next one, and you have two options. You could get this whole thing by itself first by subtracting BC. To me, as I'm starting off, Haley, I got your attention up here. As I'm starting off with these, I might be subtracting BC on both sides. So let's do that first. We have capital A minus lowercase BC equals one half BCD. I need to get rid of that half because my goal is to get this D by itself, and I have a half. How do I get rid of a half? Okay, so when I do something with its reciprocal, the reciprocal of one half is two over one. What am I doing with that? Divided by it or multiplied? Do I want to divide by two or I want to multiply by that two over one? That means on this side, I either have to take each thing times two over one or times two, or I need to do it with a two and then a parenthesis. To me, I think it's easier if I show whatever I multiply by and I put it next to every single one. Two times two times two. Why don't I have to have another two back here? All of these are multiplied together, whereas here I have subtraction. So when you have subtraction or addition, that separates our terms and you have to multiply each one. So I now have this problem, capital 2A minus 2BC. Elizabeth, what do I have left on this side when I multiply these two? B, B, D. I need to get D all by itself totally. What am I going to do to get the D totally by itself? Jordan, it's really ugly looking, isn't it? Can you help me simplify it? Can you just say ugly? No, you can't just say that. <laughs> I agree, it is ugly. Tell me, what is the first one going to be? Um, 2A um, over BC um, minus um, 2BC over BC. Okay, and what is C divided by BC equal to? One. one. So we're just going to put minus two. And so those of you asking me, why couldn't you put this all over the one denominator and put this all on the top? Because sometimes when you have terms like this and we can simplify BC over BC, that's the same as like seven over seven. Five times two over five times two, that's the same as one. So this ugly answer is our answer. So what are we doing in your assignment? Before we do that, I want to just do this last one in your notes, right here. I want to show you the answer for this one because this one is kind of ugly as you look at what it looks like solving for C. In this problem, 
When you have a parenthesis, a lot of times people think they should use a distributive property. Again, my hint is, first thing to get rid of, we're trying to solve for y, to get rid of this parenthesis, we're going to divide by w on both sides. So we have zw equals, what will it be on the other side of the equal sign, by the way, if we divide by w? What do you think, Gavin, if I want to get rid of dividing by three? And I'm going to keep the parentheses still, especially on the top. What do I have to do to get rid of dividing <coughs> by three? Um, multiply. I'm going to multiply both sides by three. Sammy, when I multiply by three on both sides, I'm going to end up with what? Three over W. Now what are you doing next to get y by itself? Okay, so x plus y. x plus y is kind of by itself now. So how can I get just y here? How do I get rid of the x? Like divide by it? Or multiply it? Or what operation are we doing? Or add. So the opposite of adding is yeah, subtracting. So 3z over w minus x. Um, they give you some really ugly formulas. You do a lot of work with formulas and some work with formulas in algebra one. You do a lot more in geometry than with in algebra one and with this here, but we will be doing some work with uh, these formulas. On the first page, you are going to do all of those, the one to 12. So we're gonna do one to 12 all, and then 13 to 19 doing the all. Um, keep checking the answers in the back as you're doing them. And as you look at that first page, this one is a lot like what we did today, right? We have the B sub 1 and B sub 2. So kind of look back at what we did for some of those. Um, show your work as you're doing them. We're going to take a homework quiz on Y equals and 